and you're working on I, mean, I can't believe how fast you've put out these novels it's so it's so cool <laughs> i yeah. don't know i'm around the wrong people because i feel slow compared to some people. <laughs> so, i mean like i just interviewed oh, you for man. the first one the second one came out and now the third one so you're just I'm you're not a out powerhouse yet. Third one's on pre-order but i did finish the draft i'm editing it i'll be editing i'm my goal is to finish it by the end of the month so that'll be That's just fantastic. out of here <laughs> well, hey, everybody, and welcome to uh, Legend Makers. This is a special interview for Legend Haven. We're joined by Stephanie Lazinski. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome back. Hello. Nice to be back. So we did interview you last time, and if folk want to, they can check out that interview. We'll drop it in the show notes in the, the description. But Stephanie lives in Ontario, Canada, with her husband, two young children, two cats, and a whole lot of books. When she isn't homeschooling her little ones, you'll find her on a long walk, drinking coffee, praying rosary, or working on her next Christian fantasy novel. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is not so much the writing part, but the building up a relationship or a community with your fans while having a family and writing at the same time for most authors it's like two out of the three please and somehow you're making all three work and look like you have a whole lot of fun so let's just dive right in how are you making it all happen <laughs> well i mean part of it is i'm sure uh faking it till you make it a little bit i'm not sure how uh <laughs> well I'm actually doing but I am having fun that part's true I do feel mm -hmm. like often like the roof is falling off my life sometimes and I think I think that's normal I think part of it is the expectations that we have you know as writers that you know because I think a lot of us growing up we grew up kind of seeing traditionally published writers and it was just kind of like oh they just sat there with their typewriter <laughs> or whatever and wrote a book and right. sent it off and then that was it but now you know if you're an author even if you are traditionally published now like they expect you to, to put in work, hours and hours of work into marketing and building that community of readers. And you can't just do the writing as much as some of us would like that. I personally um, really, I actually enjoy the marketing stuff quite a bit. So mm -hmm. for me, it's actually, sometimes it becomes the distraction from the writing because I find it harder to write <laughs> at times than it is to like, you know, mess around trying to learn Amazon ads or whatever. Sure. But uh, yeah, I think I think that's actually... The core thing for me of how I make it work is I think that you have to really know where you are as an author right at this moment. I think if you've written it, marketing gets easier when you have more products, you know, to put it to put it mm -hmm. in those kind of business terms. Um, so when I first released um, my first book, Magnify, I was like, I'm not going to spend money and I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. There were some one time things I did that I recommend everyone do, which is to set up a newsletter, which maybe we can talk about, set up mm -hmm. a website set up my social media accounts, start talking to people. But I wasn't spending money. I wasn't doing all, you know, I wasn't like going to sit there for hours trying to trying to push one book because it's just mm -hmm. from a financial standpoint, it's not going to make sense. It's going to be very hard to right. recoup that <laughs> on one mm -hmm. book. But so I think as I've started, so I had to kind of tell myself, okay, the priority has to be, first of all, the priority has to be my life, my family, my relationship with God, all that. But mm -hmm. when it comes to the writing life, you know, the next part has to be, okay, I have to not let this become a distraction from writing more books. So I really, I, I write first. That's the first thing I do every day. Um, I get up at four and I try and write from wow. five to seven. And that's kind of, okay. and not everyone has to do that. <laughs> I just have little kids home and I homeschool them. And I like the silence, the silence of my house and I'm not a night person. So ah. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's how I start. And then I fit social media in. Or it's kind of I fit that in around the spaces of my life more mm -hmm. than some and that's, other things. People checking out your channel will, will notice you you intersperse like uh, life thoughts, family thoughts. And then there's some shots of, OK, we're early. Let's get in some writing. So you do keep <laughs> it very human. And it's it's not perfectly like studied and, and Canva templates and, and like planned out for like a month. It, it kind of feels very no. human and off the fly. And, and that's your vibe. Um, so how um huh and people building trying to build an audience everywhere can you talk about where have you chosen to build a relationship with your fans yeah absolutely i like how you've turned my just general chaos into being an uh, intentional vibe <laughs> but that's kind of how it's worked out lean into what you're good at and apparently i'm not good at planning things out doing things in order <laughs> or making things look like they go together so it works but yeah i think i think that's a big a big mistake a lot of authors make um, and think I've kind of had this experience with other kind of ventures that it's really easy to think you have to do all the things and when you're like on Facebook and like some author group you see all these people like oh I'm killing it on TikTok and Radish and Twitter and Facebook and you're just like you could spend 20 hours a day on all this stuff right it's mm -hmm. it's and it's not possible it's not practical and like I said especially if you have in the back of your mind okay I need 
books to be written <laughs> for me to, for any of this to have a point i need books right. for these readers to read so mm -hmm. i personally have kind of stuck to a few core things that I, I try to dedicate time to and whenever i feel that fomo like fear of missing out like oh i might be the next big tiktok sensation i was like you know what probably not when i try to do too much i get burnt out and when you get burnt out you're not accomplishing much of anything at least i don't yeah. so yeah. i would say this is the, bi the big main thing I do that I think a lot of authors will push back on is I have a newsletter. I've had a newsletter from the beginning and I love my newsletter. <laughs> That's so how do you do thing. that? How, do, how does an author, I mean, maybe back, can you take us back to the beginning when you started it? How did it feel doable and exciting for you when you had just the one book? Yeah, so I actually don't think I really started until I did have the one book. The smart thing to do, by the way, would be to write some kind of what's called a reader magnet. So you'd write, it can be a short story, it could be a novella, it could be, I don't know, recipes from your book, it could be all kinds of stuff. You Google, you know, reader magnet ideas, you'll find all kinds of things. I didn't do that, and I still haven't done that, because uh, apparently I'm a disorganized procrastinator sometimes. But um, that's what I would recommend if you haven't don't have a book out that people can buy is to make something that makes people think oh this is cool yes i would like to be on the list and then you basically you there are technical ways you know you can do this with your you know newsletter company that would be another big topic but uh, you offer them something you know and in exchange for their email and then you email them um especially when you i think you have to kind of settle on a pace which you do i do every other week but i'm actually thinking of slowing down to maybe once a month now that i have a few books out and i'm kind of breathing a little bit um but you just have to settle and find uh what works for you and i think it i don't know how exciting it is my readers do seem to do seem to respond really well and i think everyone has that feeling like why does anyone care what i have to say in this newsletter i mean mm -hmm. i have that like nervousness but over time I really, I look at it honestly as if this is a personal letter to my closest readers and friends. Like the other social media, which I'll get into, um, that's, it, there's some crossover between those groups of people. But the people on my newsletter are the people that have actually gone out of their way to be like, yes, come into my computer. <laughs> like I am coming to you. So that means, you know, maybe they actually want me to be there and want me to talk to them. And, uh, yeah, and I just, I really try and keep a similar personal vibe. Uh, that's kind of where I share even more kind of personal things. Like I don't post my kids on social media a lot, for example. I, I mean, I understand obviously everyone's going to have different comfort levels. For me, I'm more comfortable when it comes to my, especially at this time when it's a fairly small, like, you know, small newsletter where I kind of, you know, feel pretty confident about who's on it. Then I'm like, okay, I'll share a picture of my son playing in the leaves or whatever. But it kind of lets people see who I am. And it can be, it can be mm -hmm. all kinds of things. And then that's where I get a lot of my, it helps me write too, because that's where I ask uh, questions of my readers. That's where I get input. Nice. My readers naming stuff in my books. I have like, uh, I have a couple of Wait, Easter go eggs back to that. Say yeah. that part again. What? <laughs> naming stuff in your books yes let them in i let them i let them be a part of it because i think that you know without readers writers can't you know you're just writing for yourself at that point so i really love getting to have my readers input and also i stink at naming stuff personally so whenever i can like outsource the hive mind i love to do that so yeah they named um there's an elf in book two uh, my readers named her there's a uh, kind of this uh, sea monster in book three that's on the cover of book three you can see it on my oh, social wow. media there and i was like here are some options for this one that i, that I want to go with and i did a poll and they chose that and then in book four uh no sorry in book three can't keep track of all these all these books in book three i actually have a couple of my uh a couple little easter eggs for a couple of my like super fans i'd say who've been so supportive and have been like telling their friends about my books and yeah you, you can do so many things and i would recommend recommend leaning into that and just getting mm -hmm. that newsletter and not being afraid of it what have been the responses of people when you give them one, you, you're asking their opinions on things. You're letting them help you name stuff. How are they feeling and, and DMing you? And, and what are they saying to you when you allow them to be a part of the process like that? Well, I hope they like it. I feel mostly people have just been very supportive because I think that a lot of people, part of it is that I think a lot of readers are either writers themselves or they're people who just understand that dream of writing fiction, even if they're not at a point in their lives where they want to do it. They love the magic of books and stories. So I think when you're just really honest with people and you're like, I'm trying to follow my dream, I'm trying to write books, I think people are actually really willing to lean into that with you. And mm -hmm. I, it can be hard to ask sometimes for help. So I try to do it in a fun way, right? Where I can just be mm -hmm. like, yeah, make it, uh, make them part of it. And I think 
when I talk about stuff going on, like, hey, I'm having a sale and I'm so close to hitting number one in this category, which we finally did, by the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> Again, I say we because I didn't do it <laughs> by the books. You know, I was the one just saying, hey, help, please. And I think if you do it in an authentic way where you're just like, mm -hmm. this is my dream. Walk, you know, walk beside me while I achieve that. People like wow. they it's like they almost take ownership of it. It's really fun. That's fantastic. How do you manage? So with that, how do you manage the time again with your life and then the writing? And then you've got a, you know, you've picked one network uh, from what I'm seeing, Instagram and then email. I also you just Facebook. focus on those. Yeah, just Facebook. those three okay. and Facebook. But Facebook is almost even lower, lower effort. Just it, it's not as big of a platform for me yet. It's a slow thing. But I just mm -hmm. it's growing, though. I'm starting to see people actually replying to comments and posts and stuff. So that's perfect. Just sometimes you have to scream into the void for a while. It's OK. It's yeah. normal. How do you keep um, up with it all, though? Like how uh, often do you get back to people? Uh, so yeah, this is <laughs> this is where my theory of how I connect with my readers actually kind of meets the reality of being a Christian and a wife and a mom and a homeschooler and all this stuff. I actually treat my social media more like email than like a text message, uh, and that's really important to me. And I try to be upfront about that. That like if you really need me, please email me because I'm actually more likely to get to it quicker if it's really important. Uh, mm -hmm. Or just you know you might have to message me a few times. It's not because I don't love you. It's not because I don't want to hear from you. It's because I have to choose. Do I respond? to every single comment and message and like and follow the second I get it or do I have a life write books you know put out content for everybody to be able to see so yeah that's that's actually a big part of it is I just I really try to limit myself and not get into the like scrolling rabbit hole where you're mm -hmm. just sitting there on Instagram for five hours a day because you because you can do that right Instagram will pull you right in happily so yeah yeah you'd mentioned balance. at one point with Instagram about picking and choosing the kinds of content that you create um, what do you choose not to do, for example, with Instagram? <laughs> I don't do anything I'm bad at anymore. And I, I, I'm trying to stop feeling guilty about it or like I'm a failure. <laughs> so there's a lot of things on Instagram. I think anybody who's on Instagram in the kind of fiction space will know that there's the reels have kind of like been forced onto us. I think a lot of people don't love it, but you know, Instagram's trying to be, you know, TikTok light. So, mm -hmm. you know, people are making these reels and I have friends who are making these amazing reels that I like to, like, I could get sucked into watching them, but they're, you know, they're putting up the like little hooks from their books and like nice backgrounds and pretty stuff and aesthetics and all this and I think they're awesome to watch but I'm really not very good at making them <laughs> it's just not something that I, I find it's like time consuming and I'm just sitting here like oh, I just want to write this book instead um so for the time being n never say never for the time being I'm focused more on kind of being like I enjoy just talking to the camera I like just saying hi and I've kind of realized that you know what people still seem to like those like when I'm just I have videos of all you know just like goofing around with my husband or videos of me like sitting in bed with my cat at, like freaking out about <laughs> something that's happening tomorrow or whatever and mm -hmm. I just I lean into that and uh yeah I read a book recently that talked about something that was like I kind of instinctively felt but it, it really hit it home for me she kind of just said stop focusing so much on your weaknesses and trying to improve your weaknesses spend more time focusing on doing more of what you're already good at and I was like <laughs> and it works it actually it's really helping me not to say we don't improve of course we improve but there is when you're already good at something it just it naturally is gonna is gonna happen mm -hmm. so find that with social media experiment don't be scared of it and yeah just just do what comes comfortably to you brilliant so then in in wrapping up let's talk about like imposter syndrome because i think that's one of the biggest things that it just holds i don't know maybe if, if you're like an introvert or if, and if you're a writer you're more likely i think to be an introvert than, than not um how do you get over or how have you started to to answer imposter syndrome for yourself? Well, I am a huge introvert, believe it or not. I talk a lot, but like I, I need to recharge. <laughs> I'm such an introvert. Um, I was like huge homebody. Um, but yeah, I actually I have imposter syndrome right now. I'm sitting here like, why is he inviting me on this show? Like I'm a baby author. I've been publishing for less than a year. Like, what do I know? Who cares what I have to say? Well, you're and three books for well, two books further along than I two am. And a half, so yeah. there well, you go. <laughs> <laughs> but you have the thing you have the fancy the fancy legend yeah, and it, all this it's yeah. not a book anyhow keep, keep yeah, going. yeah. <laughs> you actually yeah, put in so the work i um yeah i guess kind of i've kind of really realized that if i don't have faith in my books and that kind of have an idea like i've poured a lot of effort time blood sweat and tears into these stories and i really really tried to make them something that readers will love and if i don't feel that myself how can i expect people to spend their hard-earned money <laughs> on my books so it's not so much a thing that I feel like you can get out of imposter syndrome. I literally watch podcasts of people making like a million dollars a year as writers who are like, ah, actually I'm terrible. I think it's, a, it's a, like you said, it's like a natural thing that a lot of like writers are drawn towards. So for me, it's been more of just a, um, 
just walking with the fear instead of trying to run away from it. I just, I just keep going and keep trying to not fake it, but uh, just kind of um, be the writer that I am and try to be confident in, in what I'm doing. And yeah. people do seem to like it. At least some people seem to like it. And I, I think just you've proven it. I do think um, doing it with friends just dissolves that, that feeling of fear. And that's the value of building up a network or building up relationships with your fans is it then starts a feedback cycle. You create stuff they enjoy. They ask you questions, you create more and, and then you build it together. It's not you just putting out into the void, just hoping somebody's <laughs> like, stop doing that. If that's not working and go where it is and keep testing until you find something. And talking to, you know, I have a few people who have been such huge supporters and I'm like, those like handful of readers are, mm doing more to keep me going than a hundred readers who've just, you know, saw my book on sale for 99 cents, which it is right now. <laughs> saw my book on sale for 99 cents and just bought it. And I love those readers too. Don't get me wrong, but don't, you know, it's not a waste of time to really foster those relationships and connections. And it's, especially as a Christian creator, it's so fun to have people that I can reach out and be like, can you pray for me? I'm having a rough time. Yeah. And sometimes that's my readers, right? And writer friends. So you feel like you're great. not alone with the thing that yeah. you love because they love it too. And they're right up there with you. They love the world. They love the characters. They want it to continue. I mean, that is, that's what writers are all about. This is sharing that love. That's why you're writing. Otherwise you'd never write and just keep dreaming about it. Exactly. So Stephanie, where can people find you online? You can find me at my website, author, Stephanie .com. It's Stephanie with an F. Um, and you can find me at uh, Facebook, same name and um, Instagram at it's actually at Lozinski Stephanie because I use the other name and can't figure out how to delete the account. But never see, yeah, social media. I'm really good at social media, guys. <laughs> good, that's and of course, you can find my books on um, uh, any bookstore, Amazon, any yeah, store, Amazon, Kobo, yep. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yep. fantastic. Uh, thanks again, Stephanie. We'll put those links in the show notes. And if folk want to hang out with you after this talk at Legend Haven at the con, they can just stay right in the booth and just ask you questions and uh, talk about your next novel and what's upcoming. And, and if they have any questions for you, just put them right to you. So thanks again for coming on. Friends, if you have not heard of Legend Fiction before and you're catching this as a replay afterwards, Legend Fiction is the creative community for Catholic and Orthodox fiction writers uh, as a place for you to give and get feedback, uh, share your works in progress, and maybe double or triple your writing because it's just, we're all having so much fun. So you can check us out at legendfiction.com. Thanks again. We hope you enjoy the con. God bless you.